This is the gear all spread out. Now, probably really quickly, I had to go through it. As you see, very little of it is radio stuff. <laughs> So what's not represented in this pile are my HTs. I will have a VHF HT and, and a GMRS HT. A GMRS is for communicating home to my wife and VHF is potentially make contact, some contacts. So really quick radio stuff. This is a carbon fiber fishing pole. This is my mast. Um, logging paper. And I've actually got the printed out the winter field day official logging script there so I know what I'm getting and what to ask for and all that stuff. Coax. Uh, power cable. Mic. Random bits of extra stuff including some extra power poles. I've had those come off for some reason. Um, the KM4 ACK NFED uh, antenna. Well, this thing is really cool. I've been working with it the last couple of days and it just tunes really nicely. Uh, well, it is tuned. Um, head unit. This will be packaged separately. And then the radio is actually in here. And this is a homemade kind of water resistant package to help me keep some of the moisture off. And then this will actually, I'll take that off and I'll drop it into this bag. And that'll be handy for for transport and for storage. So you can see why I would do that. Some handles. Uh, when your hands are cold, last thing you wanna do is drop your stuff. And then a six amp, 12 volt bio -NO battery. So it's a 72 watt hour. Um, that should last me a little bit, but I'm not going up for a whole long time. So that is the radio gear. What I don't have represented here either are I'm gonna have a, an extra jacket or two, but that's all right, and just stuff that in the bag. So um, you can see back here, we've got a baseball cap kind of thing, a cap. This is actually synthetic, and this will help uh, put perspiration, keep the sun off my face a little bit. Uh, ski goggles, this is great, especially if it's windy or stormy. You've got to have these to keep the snow and, and wind off your eyes. Um, then I actually have a couple hats because they get wet. So having a spare hat, a couple ounces, save you some, some pain. These are my over mitts. Now I was telling, talking to Tech Prepper about this. Uh, these are my Hestra super warm mitts. These have been on lots of adventures and they never failed me. These things are super warm and uh, probably never ever get rid of them, at least until I wear them out. And then if I have to fall back on something, I've got these over mitts. And these go over whatever else you're wearing. And these have a BBL. Instead of leave, they're waterproof and uh, they've got some insulation. So these actually, these are lifesavers. Okay, while I'm not camping, which realistically I just needed one warmer bag uh, to do it, it's gonna look like I have camp with me. So it's gonna look like I have camp with me. Here's a sleeping bag. This is to keep me warm and dry. Tent poles for the shelter. You guys know the story behind that. Um, The shelter. This is actually a super lightweight um, R value of four or five, I believe. I forgot. This is a Thermal Rest Neo Air. I've used this on Mount McKinley. Uh, not Mount McKinley. <laughs> I've used this on Mount Whitney. And sleeping on the ice, this is just the best. So that'll help me stay warm and dry. This cool little bag has a carabiners in it my cordage on a carabiner and I just did a quick little clip on how to do that and so this will actually go on the outside of my bag so I don't need to put that in I've got some extra straps here that goes in um, the headlamp this goes in the top of the pack and it's a that's a safety item you gotta have that I've got my uh, Abri 42 inch antenna which I will take with for my VHF uh, handheld this is great I love this thing um, it's obnoxious but I still like it and then I've got this little first aid kit. It's actually combined with stuff. So this has bandages, um, tape, and some bigger bandage, a ferro rod, an extra lighter, some prescription medication for myself, and for some reason, some Benadryl. And this also has my pencil, a little mechanical pencil for logging. 
Um, ideally, I will be logging just with a voice recorder, just to keep it simple, but if that fails, I can do my paper logging with my logs. Um, Leatherman, thermometer, this will go on the outside of the pack. This is an arrow shaft, carbon arrow shaft, with some electrical tape and some duct tape, just to be handy, just in case you need to make a small repair. I'm doing just a day trip, so I don't need a whole lot of stuff. Um, little TP and a little bag. And then always got my emergency blanket, space blanket. So that's always super useful stuff to have. Um, yeah, I've got another one of these blue bags and I will probably use that for probably for the battery just to wrap it up. So that is that stuff. Now the next thing is how am I going to do water? Um, I'm going to send probably 3,000 vertical feet and I want to have less weight in my pack. So what I'm going to do is carry this thermos full of water and then when I get up there I'm going to actually use the stove and the kettle to boil water from the snow and then I'll put it in this steel canteen to cool it off in the snow. Um, you know, titanium fork spoon, a mug, I'm still debating if I'm going to take this. Um, and this is a, a MSR, kind of a thick foil to envelop the stove in the snow so that it can maintain some of the heat and not lose so much. Um, and then a warm meal, that's a freeze-dried meal from good to go. It's probably expired, but we're going to eat it anyway. Um, and inside the kettle, there's just my snacks and a stove head and a lighter and some hot cocoa and my coffee for the morning since it'll be early. And then a piece of avalanche gauging equipment. This is an inclinometer, totally analog, but measuring your slope is super important. If you don't measure your slope, you have no idea how steep it is. Uh, you are running an avalanche risk. So good thing to have with you. Um, anything above 30 degrees is suspect, especially where we are now in the Wasatch. So yeah, if you're traveling with your radio to do radio stuff in avalanche terrain or in the mountains during winter, uh, definitely get some training. It's, it's worth it. It could save your life. Uh, last bits, the avalanche probe, which has multiple cool uses, measuring snow depth, um, shovel, digging out shelter, whatever, and a snow saw. Snow saw can be used for wood. Okay, so other odds and ends. Well, this is odd. This is a Cane Creek chair. Some of you may remember these. It's just a foldable pad chair. It's so sweet to have, especially for an operation like this where you are gonna be sitting. Um, it's very light compared to other chair systems and it can attach the outside of my bag with, without any kind of struggle. Um, and then the bag for this trip is going to be a 23 year old Dana Designs Bighorn. This thing has been on every kind of adventure and I uh, guess I have some more for it. Last year I sprayed it down with some fresh DWR so it should maintain some water resistance um, and this thing can carry a lot for how small it is. This is a very small bag but it's got this cool little pocket. I'll show you that right there and that's where the radio is going to be. So during travel uh, while it's waterproof the heat from my bag will help keep the radio warm until it's ready to operate. Once the radio is operating, it's it's got its own heat. So it's a it's one amp on idle. So a uh, battery won't last super long, but it will uh, keep itself kind of warm. So um, anyhow, I have all this stuff is going to go in there. And if you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you on this because um, this is new for me. Winter Field Day will be my first uh, kind of radio event, and uh, it is my first time taking my HF rig out. So there's a lot for me to learn. Um, I'm going to be extra careful with the radio because I really don't want to damage it. So I'm taking extra precautions. There probably be, will be a little bit more padding and insulation for the radio. I think that all this gear, try to minimize it absolutely. 
uh, without overlooking some fail safes, uh, cordage for one, things that might seem like you're simplifying. Sometimes you do need them depending on where you're going to set up. So um, I will see you guys out there. Backcountry Amateur Radio. Oh, and thank you all subscribers. Really appreciate your support. Uh, please, please share this. If you have someone who's interested in doing a ski tour, um, a radio activation, ski touring summit, backcountry skiing with a radio, that's kind of what this channel is all about. Uh, winter Field Day is very applicable to Backcountry Amateur Radio. All right, see you guys.